Hey, what's up? It's Michael. I've got a list to share with you today. And number five on this list, it's something I've not seen anywhere else and it has changed the way that I use Discovery Plus. So let me give you a sneak peek. I think this is also a tip that you could use with your other streaming services. So that is a little tease, but before we get to tip number five, there's a lot more information that I wanna share with you today to help you get the most out of Discovery Plus. So give this video a like and let's get started with where the streaming experience usually begins. Number one, understand how the home screen works. If you've tried it out, you know Discovery Plus has a ton of content across a lot of genres, but it could use some improvement in three areas, personalization, navigation, and features. It's a new service, we'll cut them some slack, but that has led me to some workarounds. Let's take a look. And when you first open the app, you're gonna see the For You tab. But at the top of the screen, that is where you can move to genres like relationships, true crime, home, and more. Back to For You for now, I've noticed that the main show featured usually is not tied to my interests or viewing history, so I just ignore it. As I scroll down on the For You section, you can see a list of networks. If I've got a general idea what I'm looking for, I will use this. Let's keep scrolling. And when I'm just browsing for a show, I tend to focus on three areas, featured, recommended for you, as well as trending. Continue watching is just like it sounds, but it is a little bit annoying because there's no way to remove shows from here, including things that just autoplay. Next up, a shortcut to my list, and this is really useful, but I wanna talk more about that coming up in just one minute. And toward the bottom of the For You screen, you will see channels. Here you can watch specific shows 24 seven. And those include House Hunters, 90 Day Fiance, and Homicide Hunter. Now with that massive library of content, I understand why Discovery Plus has so many ways for you to find things. My only hope is that over time, it's gonna get better with those personalization features. Next up, number two, add shows to my list. Now while we wait for those improvements to personalization, at least there is a watch list feature and it is called My List. Here I'm back at the home screen. Check out the options for the featured show. There is Start Watching or Add to My List. You will see these options for every show. And if you want to add it to your watch list, just select it. It's really that simple. Earlier I showed you a shortcut to your My List from the For You screen, but you can see your entire My List by using the navigation on the left. If there's a show that I watched and liked it, I always just add it to my list. And here's why. Discovery Plus does not make it easy to tell when new episodes are available. For some shows, you will see release dates in the description. For example, this one, it says new on Mondays, but that is not for every show. So I find myself going back to the my list section frequently to check my favorite shows to see if they have new episodes available. Now to number three, read monthly content emails. Here on my channel, I've talked a lot about Discovery Plus and its experimentation, moving shows off cable and exclusively onto the app, and all of those experiments have made it harder to keep up with your favorite shows. But here's one thing Discovery is doing, releasing a monthly email that reveals all of the new titles coming to Discovery Plus for the upcoming month. You may have seen some cord cutting websites republish this news release, Cord Cutters News is one of them. These monthly content emails, they're released on Discovery Plus's special website for members of the media. But here's a tip, anyone can access it and there is no password required. Here you can see the press release for May's new shows. It went out on April 27th. I'm gonna drop a link in the description below so you can bookmark that page and check back in the future for updates on Discovery Plus content. And of course, if you are already a subscriber, you may get separate emails with updates on content. Number four, follow your favorite stars. So I mentioned earlier that Discovery Plus needs to do a better job of spotlighting new episodes of shows you're already following. One way to get around that, follow the stars directly. So here's an example. I've been selling a home recently and the Discovery Plus original series, One Week to Sell, it's become one of my little favorites, but after I got into it, the weekly episodes stopped. By the way, that white bar at the bottom of each episode thumbnail, that's how to tell if an episode has been watched. And you can see there were 12 total episodes. I watched them all. So I found the host on Instagram and I learned a couple of things right away by just reading her social media posts and replies to questions. First, 
the season that I watched on Discovery Plus, it's actually going to air on the cable network HGTV in the summer. And second, no new episodes for now. They're hoping for a second season. So the takeaway is just that if there's a show you really like, follow the host on social media like Instagram because you know the host is going to be promoting their work all over the place. You've made it to number five, create genre profiles. And this is the tip I'm most excited to share with you today. When you sign up for Discovery Plus, you can create up to five profiles and there are four simultaneous streams allowed for a single account. Now that's great for larger households because everyone can have a separate my list. But for singles, couples, or families who watch TV together all the time, I've been playing around with something else. Take a look. Instead of creating profiles for everyone in the house, make profiles by genre. You could have two individual profiles, then maybe one for crime shows, another for home shows, and a third for food shows. And look, you can even select that crime scene tape image for the crime show's profile. Creating profiles for different genres can come in handy if your my list is too difficult to navigate with the shows you're following or even shows that you haven't gotten around to watching yet. I understand this tip is not going to be for everyone. It depends on the size of your household, what types of shows you watch, and how you watch TV alone or together as a family. But if you do watch certain shows together, you could create a profile called family and that way you can save shows to a separate my list if you are waiting to stream them with family or friends. Number six, get the ad free version. I don't usually make recommendations like this, but Discovery Plus is an exception. Let's talk about why. As of this recording, the ad supported plan is $4.99 a month. The ad free plan is $6.99 a month and that is just a $2 difference. I tried the ad supported plan for my free trial and to be honest, there were just too many ads for my liking so the extra $2 is money well spent for ad free. And Discovery Plus really is a good value when you compare it to the competition. Take a look here, there is a $6 difference between Hulu's ad supported and ad free plan, Peacock Premium, that is $4.99, while Peacock Premium Plus with no ads is $9.99. And there is a $5 a month difference for Paramount Plus 2. Its ad-free plan is $9.99, while a new plan with limited commercials launches in June 2021 at $4.99. And as for Discovery Plus, you can always start with that ad-supported plan for your free trial. And if the ads are too much, like in my case, just switch to the ad-free plan before your free trial expires and you get billed for the first time. We've made it to number seven, consider a gift subscription. Now Discovery Plus does not offer an annual plan at a discounted rate, at least not as of this recording, but it does offer gift subscriptions from a special section on its website. And here they are, there are two options, 12 months and six months, both are for the ad-free version of Discovery Plus. Right now they are at regular price, so no discount, but follow the community tab of my YouTube page for news and deal alerts, I got a year of Discovery Plus for 30% off a few months ago. If that returns, I'll post it on the community tab and I'll also have a link to the gift subscription page in the description below. Now that gift subscription is convenient if you wanna add it to your holiday or birthday wish list, but also if you just don't wanna fool around with being billed every single month. But this is important. When I signed up for the gift subscription, I used a new email address. It is easy to redeem a gift card when you're a new subscriber because you'll just visit the link at the bottom of your screen and follow a few steps. But for existing customers, this FAQ page on Discovery Plus's website lays it all out. It says that you're gonna need to contact them for assistance. Sounds like a lot of work to me, so just a heads up, use a different email for the gift subscription with Discovery Plus to avoid that hassle. So let's face it, Discovery Plus has got a long way to go when it comes to improving its functionality and personalization, but I do hope that these tips have been helpful for you in the meantime. If you've got something to add, please leave it below. I love reading your comments, and I hope to see you back here for another video soon. Take care.